Our tour of the Wyoming Division Historical Society Model Railroad continues with Section 2 of this three-part video. Our train leaves through the west end of Laramie Yard and is cleared through Medicine Bow and Hanna. Today, the stock pens are empty at Medicine Bow, and we may only see some rail fans waving as our train speeds by. Further west, we'll roll through Hanna, originally founded in the late 1800s as Chimney Springs, where coal was a bountiful commodity. Mark Hanna, a business developer from Ohio, influenced the Union Pacific Railroad to invest in the vast coal deposits in the area. Today, the coal fields are closing down with the introduction of steam turbine and diesel locomotives into the Union Pacific rosters. As our train rolls through Sinclair, we see the local switchers spotting freight at the warehouse and oil loading platforms. Sinclair is a rather young town along the Union Pacific Path. Established by the Producers and Refinery Corporation in the mid-1920s to harvest the oil fields, its original name was Parco. As the ruthless years of the Great Depression settled on the area, Parco became an interest of the Sinclair Consolidated Oil Company and the town took on the name of the new boss. Now, with a clear future in fossil fuels, Sinclair will be an oil refinery town with rail service to export its product. Let's take a few minutes and watch the skilled switcher team as they couple up to and spot freight cars along the sidings.
Pacific Fruit Express train 3985, otherwise known as the PFE, with a challenger on the lead, storms through town with its load of perishable cargo heading to the markets east of Cheyenne Yard. Yard workers hardly notice, as this is a daily occurrence along the Union Pacific Main Line. We catch up to our train west of Rollins as it crosses the Red Desert. A lonely crossing gate bows to the presence of our train as it continues down a mild grade into the Great Divide Basin, a vast area where rain and water has no path to reach either of the oceans directly. Pioneers avoided this path west due to its aridity and the saline content of the bodies of water. Our train comes into view of Wamsutter, another small town along the Union Pacific route through the Red Desert. Wamsutter was named after a Union Pacific bridge engineer to break the confusion between the original town name of Wasaki and a nearby frontier fort by the same name. A unique feature of Wamsutter is the Harriman siding that runs between the east and the west main lines. The specific reason for the name of the siding is lost, despite Harriman's fame as he saved the railroad's name from extinction in 1897. Our train passes through Table Rock, observed only by a few prairie dogs, then into the helix to transition down to the lower level of the railroad. Our train emerges from the helix along Bitter Creek as it runs from the west edge of the Red Desert through Rock Springs. Rock Springs was another coal mining town that sprung up along the Union Pacific Route, established in 1868. Despite a troubling incident in 1885 between the nationalities of coal miners, 
Rock Springs was incorporated in 1888. Many other businesses were developed in Rock Springs in support of the workers of more than 130 coal mines in the area. One of the prominent businesses was saloons that catered to the dozens of nationalities that worked in the mines. With oil being the fuel for the coming diesel era, Rock Springs coal mining heydays are numbered now. Our train slows as it approaches the east limits of the expansive Green River Classification Yard where the head-end power will be retired and the turbine unit will be placed for the remainder of the trip to Ogden. A switching crew stands by, ready to cut freight cars from our train to other destinations and add cars for the remaining trip to Ogden. The Wyoming Division Model Railroad uses waybill cards to keep track of the individual freight cars and route them to their destinations as they journey through this huge layout. A block card is used for blocks of cars that are going to the same destination. The Wyoming Division Model Railroad uses waybill cards to keep track of the individual freight cars and route them to their destinations as they journey through this huge layout. A block card is used for blocks of cars that are going to the same destination. We find train 74 with a veranda turbine on the lead coming east through West Evanston, heading for the Green River Yard. On the tail is Challenger 3709 to help push this freight to the rugged mountains of Utah. Upon arrival at Green River, the motor power will be broken from the train, turned around, and serviced for its next trip back to Ogden. In the meantime, the train will be broken apart and shuffled into other trains for Cheyenne and other points for the east.
Our tour of the Wyoming Division Historical Society Model Railroad will continue with Section 3 of this three-part video.